start with the presentation. Um, so just quickly, the topics I'm going to cover today. So I'm going to talk about why sun protection um, is important, so outlining the problem. Um, what is skin cancer? Um, what causes skin cancer? Um, this when we coming on. I know it would stop. Um, and how we need to protect ourselves. So looking at how we can protect ourselves through prevention and then on early detection as well. Um, so why is sun protection important? So Australia is the skin cancer capital of the world. We have the highest rates of skin cancer than anywhere else in the world. Um, at least two in three Australians will be diagnosed with some form of skin cancer before the age of 70. Um, and WA has the second highest number of skin cancers. So we're just behind Queensland on that one. So the second highest um, in the world. Um, and unfortunately, um, skin cancers can result in over 2,000 deaths. So this is actually more than the number of people who die on our roads. Um, so it's a very serious matter. Um, but the good news is that it is basically totally preventable um, if we be if we protect ourselves when we go outside in our sun smart. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you more about that, how you do that. Um, so just quickly, um, just a bit about cancer and what is cancer. So you probably know that our bodies are made up of millions of cells. And usually our cells um, like um, grow and um, replace themselves as needed. But sometimes, unfortunately, our cells can start growing abnormally, um, so they don't grow the way that they're supposed to. Um, and if this continues, um, we can develop what's known as a tumour. And tumours can either be um, benign or malignant. So benign tumours are not cancer, so they don't tend to spread anywhere outside of where they originated. Um, and quite often um, they can be removed and then won't um, come back. But um, malignant tumours are cancer, um, so um, they're the obviously very serious um, type of tumour um, and they are more likely to spread and then obviously can be potentially life-threatening um, if not detected early. Um, so there's three types of skin cancers. Um, so they're grouped into what's known as non-melanoma skin cancer and melanoma. So these are the, the major types of skin cancer. Um, so we have two types of non-melanoma skin cancers. So we have the basal cell carcinoma, which quite um, often is called BCC. And then we have squamous cell carcinoma, which is quite often um, called SCC. Um, so you could probably, hopefully the diagram is clear enough. Um, I can see some people squinting at it. Um, but it just shows um, where that the three main types of skin cancers, they develop in the cells that they're named after. So you can see we have the basal cells, which obviously where um, basal cell carcinomas form. Then we have the squamous cells, where squamous cell carcinomas form. Um, and then we have the melanocyte, melanocytes. So that's where melanomas start. Um, so just a little bit more about each type of skin cancer. So basal cell carcinomas account for 67% of all skin, skin cancers, so it's the most common one. Um, they rarely spread or cause death, um, and usually um, they grow very slowly, so over months or years. Um, and the most common sites for these type of skin cancers um, are sun, uh, sun exposed sites, um, but they're more commonly found in um, the head, neck and upper body region. Um, then we have the squamous cell carcinoma. Um, so this accounts for 31% of all skin cancers. Um, and unfortunately, if not detected early, um, one to two percent of these type of skin cancers can spread and potentially be life-threatening if not detected early. Um, these ones grow a bit more rapidly than the basal cell carcinoma, um, so generally over months um, compared to months to years. Um, and again, these are most commonly found on sun-exposed sites, but more commonly found in the, on the lips is, and obviously the top of your scalp as well. 
Then we have melanoma. So even though melanoma accounts for less than 2% of all cases, it is still the fourth most common cancer in Australia. So there's just a couple of stats there for WA. So in 2011, which is the latest stats that we have, um, cancer stats that we have for WA, there was just over 1,000 diagnosed cases of melanoma. Um, and unfortunately, these resulted in 180 deaths. Um, so even though it's the least common type of skin cancer, it is the most dangerous and aggressive form. Um, and I guess the most one that's most you know known about. Um, so most people know recognise melanoma. Um, and so you quite often start off as a freckle or a mole. So this is why it's so important that we're just regularly aware of what our moles and freckles look like. So if anything changes, that we can pick it up early. These ones spread really quickly. I think I mentioned that before. So generally weeks to months um, compared to the other ones, which are a bit more um, not as quick growing. Um, and it is the most common cancer in people aged 15 to 39 years. Um, so it can start from adolescence onwards. So it's quite a young person's cancer compared to a lot of other cancers. Um, so the International Agency for Research on Cancer has classified UV radiation from the sun as a class 1 carcinogen. Um, so class 1 carcinogens um, are classified as known causes of cancer. So it's an uh, UV radiation is a known cause of cancer um, and it is the major cause of skin cancers. So over 95% of all skin cancers are caused from um, overexposure to UV radiation. Um, so other class 1 carcinogens um, include um, asbestos, tobacco, alcohol, um, solarium. So it's right up there with the big ones. So um, it's a, a big deal. Um, so what is solar UV radiation? So um, solar UV radiation is part of the electromagnetic spectrum emitted by the sun. Um, but UV radiation is a bit of a, it's a silent hazard um, because we can't see it and we can't feel it. Um, so it's divided into three different wavelengths. So both UVA and UVB reach the Earth's surface. Um, and you can see from the slide that UVA is a, a cause of premature skin aging and skin cancer. And UVB is the major cause of um, skin cancer and also it's called the sunburn. But obviously we can't really detect which is which, so we need to protect ourselves from both. Um, there's also UVC, but that doesn't reach the Earth's surface, but in some industrial processes it can be found. Um, so like I mentioned before, um, UV radiation is a bit of a silent hazard because we can't see it. Um, so it's not connected to the visible light that we can see from the sun. Um, and it's not related to heat at all. Um, so quite often people can still get burnt um, on a day that's not very hot. Um, and that's because the UV can still be quite high on a day where it's not very hot. Um, so most people actually get burnt when it's, uh, on average, when it's between 18 to 27 degrees. Um, so it's important to remember that um, because UV is not related to heat at all, um, then UVs can still be quite um, high on a, a cloudy or cooler day. So we still need to protect ourselves at these times. Um, so yeah, UV um, rays can still travel through clouds, so even on a cloudy day um, it's possible to still get burnt because the UV can still be quite high. Um, so this is an important um, thing to remember that UV radiation is not related to heat at all, um, but it's a common misconception. Um, so just quickly just mentioning a few other things, um, dangers of exposure to UV radiation. Um, so other skin damage from UV. Um, one is solar keratosis. Um, this is commonly known um, as sunspots. Probably most people know it as that. Um, so it's not skin cancer, but it's a warning sign our skin has been damaged from exposure to the sun. Um, and so, um, and it can possibly lead on to skin cancer later in life because uh, it's obviously our um, skin has been damaged. 
Um, sunburn is obviously the most common one and it's the most um, obviously the visible one that we see. We can't really see the other damage as well. Um, but sunburn is the Im immediate physical effect that our skin has been damaged. Um, and then also premature ageing. So unfortunately if we expose ourselves to too much sun and don't protect it, um, we can, our skin starts to age quicker than it's supposed to and so we can get you know, more wrinkles and looks a bit more saggy. Um, so that's just another damage from UV. Um, and then we also need to protect our eyes from UV as well because um, they can be damaged from ex overexposure to UV radiation. Um, so this can be in the form of short and long term effects. Um, so short term includes excessive blinking, swelling, difficulty looking at strong light. Um, but then long term can be the cancers of the eye or cataracts as well. So it's very important that we all protect our eyes from UV. Um, and this doesn't matter if you've got dark skin or light skin. Um, we all need to protect our eyes. Um, so why do you think um, Australia has four to six times higher rates of skin cancer than anywhere else in the world? So you can see from the map, um, we know that the closer we are to the equator, the stronger the UV radiation levels are. Um, so this is a good diagram just to show the distance that we are from the equator compared to some other countries who are the same um, distance latitude north as we are south. So you might ask yourself, well, why don't they have the same skin cancer rates as we do if we're the same distance from the equator? Um, well, there's a few different reasons. Um, so the intensity of our sun is a lot stronger. We have a lot of clear, cloudless days, um, which means that more UV radiation is getting through. Um, and then also because we have a smaller population than a lot of those countries like in America and Europe, um, we have less air pollution, um, which is a good thing for the environment, but it just means that um, more UV gets through the Earth's surface um, where Australia is. Um, our population, a lot of our population have migrated here from countries um, who have very fair skin. Um, and fair skin means that we're more susceptible to, um, our skin is more likely to be damaged um, e more easily. Um, so unfortunately this is um, a risk factor for skin cancer. Um, social values, um, until more recently and I guess even now, um, being, it's kind of been a social, socially acceptable to go out and get a tan. Everyone wants to, you know, have that that summer glow, that um, nice, you know, um, brown skin. Um, but unfortunately, tan skin is damaged skin. Um, so if we're potentially exposing ourselves to the sun to get a tan, um, it means that we're putting ourselves at risk of developing skin cancer. Um, and our lifestyle. Um, we obviously have perfect weather here in Australia, especially in WA. Um, and so why wouldn't we want to go outside and enjoy it? Um, it's just been a bit smart about when we go outside um, and how we protect ourselves. Um, so this is a picture that just demonstrates how social norms have changed over time. So this is a picture of Williamstown Beach in Victoria in 1912. Um, and you can see that basically everyone's covered. Um, everyone's, basically everyone's wearing hats. Some of the kids do have shorts on. but um, there's a lot more clothing on these bodies compared to the same beach in the 1990s. Um, so you can see a lot has changed over time and this is a, a good representation of what it's still like today. Um, so obviously, basically everyone's out in their bathers and exposing a lot of skin. Um, I can only see one person wearing a hat um, and it's possible that quite a few people are burnt. So you can see how much has changed over time. Um, so I was going to do a bit of an activity, but I'm not sure how it's going to work. Um, so there's certain risk factors that um, increase a person's risk um, even more of developing skin cancers. Um, so we have a few sites that's only one person, um, but I was going to get everyone to stand up um, where they are in their site 
and you can just do it with the people obviously at your site. Um, so if everyone wants to stand up. <laughs> I can't sit down. Thanks. If you're by yourself, that's okay. <laughs> you, know, you can just do it with yourself. Um, so I'm going to yell out um, some, some points. Um, and if it's connected to you, um, you can keep standing. But if it's not relevant to you, then you can sit down. Um, so if you have fair skin, um, stay standing. Um, but if you don't, you can sit down. Um, if you have fair or reddish hair, keep standing. But if you don't, you can sit down. Um, if you have lots of freckles and moles, um, can you stay standing? Um, if you burn easily and don't really develop a tan, um, stay standing. Um, if you have a family history of melanoma, um, keep standing. Um, if you grew up in Australia, um, keep standing. Have we got anyone still standing? We've got one. <laughs> okay, it looks like most people have sat down. But um, the last few were if you spend a lot of time in the sun, especially if you don't use sun protection and if you intentionally go outside seeking a tan. Um, these are all um, obvious risk factors that increase a person's risk of developing skin cancer. Um, but I'll also make the point that um, because we all live in Australia, um, we're all at risk of developing skin cancer. So there are certain factors that increase a person's risk even more, but unfortunately we're all at risk um, because we live in Australia. Um, so this is what's known as the Fitzpatrick skin types. Um, so it helps people just assess um, the, their type, their skin type. Um, so it was developed um, by our PANZA, which is the Australian Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency. Um, and um, what you do is you do a, a, like a survey, if you can see that, um, and it's related to your um, sun exposure and what, how, what happens to your skin when you're exposed to the sun. Um, so if you um, have pale, um, if you burn easily and don't tan, compared to if you tan um, and you don't really burn, um, it helps you assess your level um, of skin type, whether you've got pale skin, um, which always burns and never tans, compared to someone who's got darker skin um, who never burns um, at all. Um, so um, that just moves on to our next slide. Just quickly wanted to cover off, um, I'm not sure if anyone's really got um, darker skin, like quite a bit darker skin, um, but for someone who's got naturally dark skin, so this is known as skin type 5 or 6, um, so you can see from the diagram um, skin type 5 and skin type 6. Um, even though they may rarely ever or never get sunburnt, um, it's still sun protection is still important because they can still develop skin cancer. Um, so people who have um, skin type 5 or 6, so naturally dark skin, have a larger amount of melanin in their skin which provides natural protection um, from UV radiation. Um, so their, skin, their risk of skin cancer is quite a bit lower than someone who does have fair skin. Um, and is more likely to burn rather than tan. Um, but it doesn't mean that they won't develop skin cancer. And it's quite often that skin cancers in people who have dark skin are more likely to be detected at a later stage or make more dangerous stage, especially for melanomas, um, because it's probably likely that um, they won't have detected on their skin a change um, in a mould or a freckle earlier <coughs> to someone who's got lighter skin who can obviously pick that up a bit. It's a bit more clearer to see it. Um, so this is just something important to remember for people who have dark skin. Okay. So how much UV radiation is too much? Um, so this diagram here is what's known as the UV index. Um, so I'm not sure if you guys have heard of this before. Um, but it was a scale developed by the World Health Organization 
which measures the amount of UV radiation reaching the Earth's surface um, and lets us know at what point um, we need to start protecting ourselves. Um, so we know from the World Health Organisation that when the UV index says it's three or above, this is a level at which we know our skin will be damaged from exposure to the sun, so we need to protect it. Um, so you can see from the diagram, um, when the UV index says it's one or two, so anything below three, we don't need to protect our skin because it's a, the UV is at a level which we know our skin won't be damaged. Um, so sun protection is not required at this time and we can safely go outside um, and not have to cover up. But once it reaches three or anything above this, um, this is level at which we know our skin can be damaged. Um, so we need to, in order to reduce our risk of developing skin cancer and to reduce our risk of our skin being damaged, we need to protect it. Um, so at the moment, um, it, UV levels will vary depending on where you are, um, and I'll talk obviously in the in the state, um, and I'll talk about that in my later slides. Um, but when the UV index is um, around three to seven, um, obviously we need to protect ourselves um, in the five ways. So flip, flop, slap, and seek and slide, which you've probably all heard about. Um, but it's important that during midday hours, um, when it's moderate to high, we definitely at least seek shade during midday hours when the UV is at its strongest. Um, and then once it reaches, um, the UV index reaches very high or extreme, so once it's eight or anything above that, because I'll just make a point of saying that the UV index doesn't have any upper limit, so it starts at zero and um, doesn't have an upper limit. So the highest reading we've had in WA has been 17. And obviously the closer we are to the equator, the stronger the UV levels will be. Um, so it's important when the UV index is at a very high extreme level, so once it's over eight, especially during midday hours, we try and limit time outside because the UV is very strong. Um, and obviously once it's three or above, we need to protect, protect ourselves. Um, so this, just, this diagram shows um, how UV levels vary across Australia. Um, so in summer, obviously, UV levels are very, very high. Um, and the higher, we, closer you are to the equator, the higher the UV levels are. Um, but you can see basically all across Australia, um, <coughs> you have, there are very high, very high or extreme levels of UV radiation over summer. And on average, the um, UV, UV index will reach a maximum of 12. Um, so that's on average across Australia. Um, but that will vary, obviously, depending on what location you're at. Um, but then during winter, we can still have quite um, high UV levels um, in winter time across Australia. So again, obviously, the closer you are to the equator, the stronger the high um, UV levels will be. So obviously, the top part of it, Western Australia, Northern Territory and Queensland, um, they have higher levels than the northern, the southern part. Um, so they, on average, have very high UV levels. Um, but then, even for most parts of the rest of Australia, we still at least reach three or above at some point during the day, on average. Um, so this is just important to remember because UV is not related to heat. Even in winter time, we can still have quite high UV levels. Um, so this is what's known as the SunSmart UV Alert. So it's issued by um, the Bureau of Meteorology um, and it's reported when the UV index is predicted to reach three or above um, on any one day. Um, so it tells you what the maximum UV index is um, forecasted to be um, and it will tell you the times of the days when you need to use sun protection. Um, so this is the um, UV alert or UV the UV alert for um, Perth, um, so for today. So the maximum UV index for Perth um, was going to, is going to be nine, and sun protection is required between 8, 10, and 340. So that means that around 9, 10, it would have, the UV index would have reached three, um, and then at around 340, it will go below three. So obviously this will vary depending on where you are, and I know you guys are obviously um, <coughs> Different locations around WA. 
So to show how the UV varies across WA, um, I included two different um, UV alerts. Um, so to save on space to make it clear, I could only actually include two. I wanted to include a few different ones, but unfortunately that got very crowded. Um, so I've included one for Broom um, and one for Collie. Um, so obviously Broom is obviously quite a bit higher, closer to the equator. So the UV, maximum UV index for Broom is quite a bit higher um, than the maximum UV index for Collie because Collie is further away from the equator than Broom is. Um, but you can see that they're both, the maximum UV index for both locations is going to be three above three. Um, and so sun protection is required um, during those times on the UV alert. Um, <coughs> just to show that so it's a good diagram just to show how UV levels vary across um, WA. Um, so to find out what the UV index is at your location, there's a few different ways. Um, so you can look on the BOM website, um, but they only actually collect UV index, um, record, well, um, say what the UV index is going to be for um, some major locations. Um, but if you go to uvawareness.com, um, for those um, communities whose sites are not listed on the BOM website. Um, you can just type in your location and it will tell you what the UV index is going to be um, for your, um, your location. Um, so it won't have the SunSmart UV alert because that's just on the BOM website, but um, it will tell you what the UV index is going to be. Um, so this is a global um, international website. So if you're traveling overseas and you want to know what the UV index is going to be for your, um, where you are, then you can look on this website. Um, then there's also the uh, Panda website, which um, provides real-time UV levels. So unfortunately, it only records real-time UV levels for Perth, but it's very interesting still just to see um, how the pre forecasted UV levels vary to the real-time. Um, so obviously, it takes a very slightly depending on um, if it's complete cloud cover. Um, so if there's a few clouds here and there, it won't make much of a difference, but if there's a complete cloud cover, it will vary slightly as well. Um, so just quickly, how is our skin damage? So skin damage, can, in someone who's got fair skin in the summer, um, we can get burnt in as little as 10 minutes. So it can happen very quickly, especially in summer. Um, so most damage occurs um, um, as a child, so we, it's estimated that 50% of total lifetime exposure to UV radiation occurs before the age of 18. Um, from birth to sun, so someone who works inside but then spends a lot of time outside on the weekends or in their holidays, um, this is known as intermittent exposure. Um, and so it can actually put them at higher risk of developing melanoma because it's not just related to the... Um, the amount of sun that you see but the pattern of exposure. So receiving bursts of sunlight um, on holidays and weekends. Um, and then obviously skin damage accumulates as well, so from constant exposure. So this is very relevant for people who spend a lot of time outside, um, either in their leisure time um, or at work. Um, so they're just how skin damage um, occurs. Um, so just quickly, this just reinforces what I was saying about how you find out about the UV index. Um, so we know sun protection is required when the UV index is three or above. Um, so to find out what the UV index is going to be for your location, there's a few different things you can do. Um, so there's a SunSmart Sun app that you can download, which is free for um, smartphones and tablets. Um, unfortunately, this only um, records the locations um, that are on the BOM website. Um, but you can see, um, even if your location isn't on that list, um, if you pick one that's kind of the same latitude, um, east or west, or a little bit higher north, um, then it will give you a good representation of that it will be around the same UV level as your location. 
Um, but there's a few other websites that you can check. Um, so My UV is a website developed by Cancer Council. Um, so again, that uses the same data from the BOM website, um, but provides you with some information about the UV index and UV levels and everything like that as well. Um, obviously, the BOM website, our PANS are like I mentioned before, and the UV awareness um, website as well. Um, so they're a good source of information about UV levels and UV, the UV index. Um, I just wanted to quickly um, tell you, um, we started at Cancer Council um, developing what's known as a UV real-time meter. Um, so this one um, is, was the first one to go up. So it's at Deepwater Point in Mount Pleasant in Perth, um, which I'm not sure if you guys have ever visited before. Um, but it provides the real-time reading um, for that location. Um, and so people who visit that location um, can see what the UV index currently is um, and then they can obviously see what it is at that point in time and then they know whether they need to use sun protection or not. Um, so we're hoping to get more of these up and running, um, but I thought I'd just let you know that that's um, going on. Okay, so getting on to prevention. Um, so how you guys need to, how you can protect yourself um, when the UV is three or above. Um, so you've probably all heard the slip, slop, slap, seek and slide message before. Um, it's been around for quite a while, but I'll just reinforce what each of them means. Um, so it's important um, to um, slip on sun protective clothing. So clothing is the best form of protection. Um, obviously, um, we can see where the clothes are on our skin. Um, and it doesn't rub off like sunscreen and we don't need to reapply it unless we take it off, obviously. Um, so the much, if, if we can cover as much skin as possible with clothing, this is the best form of protection. Um, so important to just look for long sleeve pants, um, something that's loose fitting so it's a bit cooler and obviously the closer we the more protection it provides. Um, Sunscreen is one that a lot of people use, obviously, but our message is not to rely on sunscreen alone. Um, so sunscreen will never be 100% protective, um, so this is why it's important that we use sunscreen along with the, five other, the four other messages. Um, so just quickly, when thinking about choosing a sunscreen, it's important to, you can look for one that's got um, an SPS, so a sun protection factor reading of 30 or higher. So you'll, you'll probably know that there's 50, SPF 50 available now as well. Um, but there's not much major difference between the 30 and 50. So we still encourage people to use the 30 if they've got that. Um, so that still provides good protection. Um, looking for something that's broad spectrum, so protects from UVA and UVB. Um, water resistant and obviously keeping an eye on the expiry date. Um, and there's heaps of different varieties of sunscreen. So this is the Cancer Council range, but obviously there's heaps of different other products on the market. Um, and you'll definitely find one that suits your needs. Um, just quickly in regards to how to apply sunscreen. Um, on average, most of us don't apply sunscreen as it was designed to be used. So um, we don't initially put on as much as we need to, and we don't reapply it as often as we should. Um, and this is another reason why it's important not to just rely on sunscreen alone because we're not getting the 100% protection from it. Um, so it's important to look at um, layering it on instead of rubbing it in so that you get the more protection from it. Um, and to make sure that you're fully protected when you go outside, it's important to um, apply 20 minutes before going outside so it just has time to bind to your skin. Um, and then obviously as well, it's important to think um, how often you need to reapply it. Um, so we encourage people to reapply um, at least every two hours or more, even more if you're swimming or sweating or anything like that. Um, so, and then just quickly um, in regards to how much sunscreen to apply, um, on average, um, the average size person needs about six and a half teaspoons for the whole body. So that's a teaspoon for each arm and leg and the front and back of your body, and then half a teaspoon for your face. 
So usually we don't put enough sunscreen on, so if we are going to be using, when we do use sunscreen, it's just important to think about how much we're putting on. Um, obviously, slipping, slapping on a hat. So just when thinking about wearing a hat, um, the best hats are those that provide good protection for our face, ears and neck. Um, so something that's got a broad brim um, or a bucket hat provides the best protection. Um, we don't recommend that people use um, caps only because they don't really provide any kind of protection, only for your immediate face. Um, so you can see from this picture here, um, the guy who's wearing a cap, his neck and ears are completely exposed um, and they're already getting burnt. Um, but someone who's wearing a broad brimmed hat um, has that added protection, so they're more fully protected. Um, so important to remember. Um, seeking shade um, is obviously another important message, especially during midday hours when the UV is at its strongest. Um, so this can be in the form of natural or built shade, um, so from trees or gazebos or anything like that, barbecue shelters. Um, or if there's not going to be any shade available where you're going, um, maybe think about bringing your own um, shade. Also just important to remember, um, when driving the car, we're not necessarily fully protected in our cars um, if we don't have window tinting. So if you've got tinting in your car, then you are protected. Um, but if you don't have any win um, tinting on the side windows, um, still quite a significant amount of UV can get through. Obviously, it's not as much as when we're out in direct sunlight. Um, but if you don't have tinting, then still some UV can still get in. Um, so just important to remember. So this is why it's a good idea to get tinting on your um, car windows, on the side windows, um, because then you know that you're protected, especially if you spend a lot of time in the car. Um, and then the last one is sliding on some sunglasses. So um, as I mentioned before, um, our eyes can be damaged from exposure to UV radiation as well. Um, and no matter what our skin type, um, so it's important that we wear sunglasses to protect our eyes from UV as well. Um, so luckily this is probably the easiest one for everyone uh, because we, most of us wear sunglasses when we go outside anyway. Um, so, but we know it's not just to protect our eyes from the glare, um, but also from um, UV as well. Um, so it's just important to um, think about wearing sunglasses as well when we go outside. Um, so just quickly going to talk about early detection. Um, so how do we know if our skin has been damaged? Well, quite often we don't know, um, unless obviously we have been burnt. Um, that's the immediate physical effect that we know our skin's been damaged. Um, but we don't know exactly how much damage we've received. Um, so when trying to prevent, um, detect skin cancers early, it's important just to keep an eye on our skin, know what's common for us, um, so where our moles and freckles and everything are, so that if anything changes, we can pick it up early. Um, because over 95% of all skin cancers can be successfully treated if detected early. Um, so this is why the early detection message is very important for skin cancer. Um, so, and quite often skin cancers won't be painful or ugly. We're more likely to see them than feel them. Um, so this is just why it's important that we're just regularly aware of what's normal for our skin and so we can pick up any changes. Um, and it's important to also just look, cover, look all over our body, even under our nails and on the soles of our feet because um, skin cancers can pop up in um, non-exposed sites, especially um, more melanoma. Is, can pop up on those sites. So it's more common on sun exposed sites, but it can appear, um, melanoma can appear on um, non sun exposed sites. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, so when checking our skin, it's important to look for new spots that pop up that weren't there before, changing spots, so keeping an eye on our moles and freckles and to see if anything's changing. Um, and then obviously um, any sores that we've got that aren't healing, that aren't going away as they're supposed to, um, this is also very important. Um, and obviously there are some parts of our body that we're not going to be able to see very well. Um, so 
just keep an eye um, on these spots and maybe getting a doctor or a partner to look um, at these spots for us. And obviously, if you detect anything that doesn't look normal, then making sure that you go see your doctor straight away to get it checked out. Um, and it's important even at a young age to be aware of these because especially melanoma can start at adolescence onwards. Um, so it's very important that we're just aware of our own skin. And if you start thinking about checking your skin at an early age, it's more likely to become a routine and so and then it's just a normal part of life. Um, this is just quickly um, a detection guide for melanoma. So it just um, shows the things that you need to be looking out for. So if you've got a mole, when you're looking at your moles, if you've got something, a mole that um, when you cut it in half, it doesn't have an equal mirror image, um, if it has the irregular border, um, if the colour is changing, um, and if it's growing in size or changing in size. Um, these are all things just to keep an eye on, and if any of these things are happening, then best to go see your doctor straight away to just check it out. Okay, um, I was going to do a bit of a quiz to make sure you guys were all listening to me. I, I should have um, warned you at the beginning that this was going to happen. I was going to and then, sorry, I forgot. Um, so I can see some of you falling asleep. <laughs> um, so hopefully I haven't bored you too much. Um, <coughs> I thought I'd just do a quick quiz um, and maybe I know that there's some people um, that on the site um, by themselves. Um, so if, if someone does know the answer and wants to um, spell it out, that's great. Otherwise, you can just do it if there's a couple of you or a few of you in a group um, can see who knows the answer. Um, so I'll just um, say the questions and then if someone wants to yell out the answer, that's great. Otherwise, you can do it in your groups at your site. Um, so it's a true or false. Um, so, myth or fact, um, UV radiation is the major cause of skin cancer. True. True. Yep, that's right. Yep. Um, you only get burnt when it's hot. False. False. Hey, that's great. Um, you need to use sun protection even if you tan. True. <laughs> that one's a true one. Yep. So it's important to use sun protection um, even if you can uh, when the UV is three or above. Um, you can get burnt by the wind. This is actually false. There's no such thing as wind burn. Um, it's just sunburn. Um, so your skin won't, your wind won't actually burn your skin, it will just dry it up. Um, so if you feel like your skin's being burnt by the wind, it's just sunburn. Um, so over 95% of skin cancers can be successfully treated if found early. True. 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 <laughs> Great. Um, cloud cover protects you from the sun. False. You won't get burnt if you're in the shade. That's actually false. You can still get burnt if you're in the shade, depending on where, what shade you're near. So if you're near close to reflective surfaces, um, UV can still um, burn you. So it's just important to think about this when choosing shade. Um, but obviously, still, you're more protected in the shade than you are in the direct sunlight. Um, so all skin types <laughs> are damaged by UV radiation. True. Yep, that's true. Um, so all skin types can be damaged from UV, um, but obviously someone who has lighter skin, um, they're more likely, more susceptible to it. Um, so when the UV index is three or above, we need to protect ourselves from the sun. That's true. Great to know that you guys are all listening. So 
The main thing to take away from this um, is that we need to protect ourselves when the UV index is three or above. Um, so just quickly in summary, um, so when the UV index is three or above, we need to protect ourselves because this is a level at which we know our skin can be damaged from exposure to the sun. Um, so this involves wearing sun protective clothing, sunscreen, putting on a broad brim hat, seeking shade and sliding on some sunglasses. Um, and it's important especially to take extra care during midday hours um, and if the UV index, especially during summer, when the UV index can get to um, extreme levels of 12, 13, um, this is during midday hours, it's best to limit time outside if you can during those um, high UV times. Um, and then obviously just important to that we're just regularly checking our own skin so we can um, know what's normal for us and quickly pick up any changes that are happening. Um, and then obviously if we do detect any changes, go see our GP straight away to get them checked out. Just quickly, usually in the presentation I'll provide some resources, um, but I thought I'd just quickly show you some of the different resources that we have. This is just a selection of some of the brochures that we have and posters. Um, but if you would like any more information about the resources that we do have available, um, you can vet, visit the Cancer Council website, so that's um, cancerwa.asn.au um, and on the home page if you just click the publications tab up the top of the page um, then that will take you to the publication section of the website and um, you will be able to find um, the resources quite quickly from there um, and you can download um, a printable um, PDF version of the resources um, of all our resources um, and then there's also information there on ordering them if you would like any hard copy as well. Um, so just to let you know what we have available. Um, so that's it from me. I'm not exactly sure what the time is um, but they're all my contact details um, and website details um, if you would like to um, contact me directly. Um, and if any anyone has any questions, feel free to um, speak up now. Um, or you can also provide them on the feedback form as well for those people who um, are viewing this presentation via a video.